My name is Matt Lamana, and I'm an assistant curator of vertebrate paleontology at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History in Pittsburgh. I make my living as a professional dinosaur paleontologist. So I study dinosaurs, I name new species, I um, go to faraway places to look for dinosaurs and bring them back. I spend about 10 months a year um, in the museum and about two months of the year out in field areas. And the field areas that I'm working in now are in Egypt and in Argentina, in particular in the region called Patagonia in southern Argentina, and in China. And my field work involves searching for fossil bones and collecting them. There are no feathers like this one have ever been found on a feathered dinosaur. And my laboratory work involves, once the bones are collected, we bring them back to the laboratory where I study them and determine what dinosaurs they belong to, what those dinosaurs are related to, whether they're new species and, and, and things like that. I decided to become a paleontologist when I was very young. My mom tells me I was four years old when I first told her I wanted to be a paleontologist. And I think it was, um, you know, just one of these things where you're a little kid and, you know, you say something like that. But in my case, I never really grew out of it. One of the reasons I did well in math when I was in school was because I knew that it would help me as a paleontologist. One huge part of paleontology is getting funding to continue your research. And so when you're putting together a budget, um, in other words, you're figuring out how much an expedition is going to cost, you use um, relatively basic math to do that. For instance, if I have a crew of 10 people and they're going to be in the field for 30 days, you know, I need 300 person days worth of food. So figuring out how much of a particular supply we're going to need for the field, how much it's going to cost, um, things like that are, are common oh, yeah. uses of math in paleontology, other than in direct study of dinosaurs. Taking accurate measurements is critical for paleontology, um, especially when one is estimating, taking indirect measurements. For instance, if I mess up the circumference of the femur of, say, the Tyrannosaurus rex behind me, um, by even maybe 10 centimeters, I could end up with a weight estimate that's either way too big or way too small. So those errors would be magnified you know, once I plug that into the equation. So taking very good basic measurements is critical. Math is critical for, for dinosaur paleontology. When you study a dinosaur, one of the fundamental things that you do is to measure each, each bone in your, in your skeleton, um, oftentimes taking several measurements from a single bone. Measuring bones can tell us a lot about the dinosaur that we're interested in. The size, the weight, the species that they belong to, how fast they were moving, potentially how old they were when they died, all kinds of things. Paleontologists believe that we can estimate the speeds of dinosaurs from their fossil trackways. And a trackway is just a set of footprints made by a single dinosaur. So you get, you know, sort of left, right, left, right. You can't actually take a dinosaur out to your backyard and, and clock it with a, you know, with a radar gun. So you have to use, uh, you know, indirect measurement to get at that particular aspect of, of dinosaur biology. Once you take a stride length from a fossil trackway, you can estimate the hip height of the dinosaur that made those tracks. And with the hip height and the stride length, you can plug both of those figures into an equation and get an estimate of how fast that particular dinosaur was moving. Actual estimates based on actual fossil trackways range usually between about 5 and 20 miles an hour. All of the measurements that we take when you study a dinosaur can help us oftentimes by ruling out particular hypotheses. Now, uh, let's say that I take a femur of the Tyrannosaurus rex, the thigh bone, and measure its circumference and get a weight estimate of Tyrannosaurus rex of, of about five tons. To me, that would seem to effectively rule out the hypothesis that T-Rex could run at 60 miles an hour. That would be equivalent to an elephant trying to do the same thing, which I think is, is uh, basically impossible. There are no animals in the modern world that weigh five tons that can run 60, 60 miles an hour. And so in that sense, um, measuring the bones of T-Rex can actually help us to learn how it lived. Math is used in lots of aspects of paleontology and many aspects that, that most people might not consider. Oftentimes you do use math when you're um, looking for a locality to search for dinosaurs. 
the locality is given in terms of, you know, something like 25 kilometers northwest of a particular town. If you know where you are, then you know exactly how far it is before you, you get to that particular place. The process of dinosaur excavation um, also involves some measuring and some mathematics. Um, for instance, if we find a particular, like a dinosaur, a fragment of a dinosaur bone um, on the ground, then we search for the layer that it's coming out of. And if we're lucky, there's more bone um, actually in place in the rock. So we uh, clear off as much as we can and we expose as many bones as we can. Um, and at that point, we set up a grid, um, usually one meter by one meter squares. And the point of that is, is to establish the position of each bone in the quarry, not only in absolute position, but also position relative to each other. Um, in addition to that, we'll often take angles of, of orientation of the bones. Are they all um, parallel to each other? Are some perpendicular to others? And all of this uh, keys into uh, when we reconstruct the environment that the dinosaur was living in, um, or, or in particular, that it died in. All of the measurements that we take um, about dinosaurs, whether it be measuring the bones or, or measuring um, aspects of the quarry or the rocks that they're found in, can tell us about the way dinosaurs lived, which is one of the most important things one can aspire to, to study in dinosaur paleontology. As paleontologists, we're reconstructing the history of life on Earth. We're learning about the past. In the present, we're currently going through a period of intense global change. And um, the only way that we can directly understand the past is through studying the rock record and the fossils it contains. Through an understanding of the past, we may gain more understanding of the present. When dinosaurs were alive during the Cretaceous period, was the uh, warmest period in Earth history for the past 600 million years. And so if we study that time interval, we may gain insight into what might happen if the Earth continues to warm.